case for restraint, very quickly. Uh, if I'm running foreign policy, and you can rest assured that will never happen, uh, but if I was running American foreign policy from the early 90s forward, I would have pursued a policy of restraint. Uh, I would have abandoned liberal hegemony, uh, which mainly means abandoning the policy of spreading democracy around the world. Okay, I, I think that, that was the key mistake that we made. Right? We, we thought that liberal democracy was going to take root everywhere. For those of you, you young people who haven't read Frank Fukuyama or Francis Fukuyama's famous article, The End of History, you really should read it. The two most important articles that were written when the Cold War ended were Francis Fukuyama's The End of History and Charles Krauthammer's The Unipolar Moment. And basically what Frank Fukuyama said is that we spent the first half of the 20th century defeating fascism. We spent the second half defeating communism. And now that we had won those two battles, all that was really left standing was liberal democracy. And the world was slowly but steadily going to evolve into a system of liberal democracies. And Frank says at the very end of the piece that the biggest problem that we're going to face in the future is probably boredom. Boredom. Why boredom? Because once you have a world that's populated by all liberal democracies, you get peace. Uh, and Krauthammer wrote this piece called The Unipolar Moment that he said this is a unique uh, moment in world history. And the United States is by far the most powerful state on the planet. We have this tremendous military, and we ought to use it to reshape the world in our own interest. You marry Krauthammer's argument with Fukuyama's argument. Fukuyama says we've got the wind at the ba our back. Krauthammer says we have this big stick that we can use to facilitate the process, and you're off to the races. Right? And this, of course, is exactly uh, what happens. But I would have abandoned that. And I would have concentrated instead on maintaining a favorable global balance of power, uh, which mainly means containing the rise of China, right? as you would expect from a realist like me. What I really care about is not what kind of political system a state has. I just care how much power it has. And my principal goal as an American is to make sure we are the most powerful state on the planet. Uh, and as many of you know, in my lexicon, that means to make sure we are a hegemon in the, in the Western Hemisphere. We want to be a regional hegemon in the Western Hemisphere and make sure that there is no hegemon in Europe or in East Asia or in the Gulf. Right. So I, I believe in primacy. That's my definition of primacy, to be the most powerful state in the system. But I'm not interested to go back to my first point in spreading liberal democracy. Again, I think liberal democracy is a wonderful thing. If every state in the world was a liberal democracy, I think that would be good for the people who live in those countries. But my view is, because I believe in sovereignty, it's up to them to decide what they want. Uh, final point I want to make to you here on this slide is, liberalism abroad leads to illiberalism at home. Uh, this is what the founding fathers understood. If you're in a permanent state of war, right, it's going to have consequences for liberalism at home because you're going to create a national security state. And you're going to have a state that spies on people and does all sorts of other things. Uh, so I think from a point of view of civil liberties, uh, this foreign policy